Welcome back everybody. This is Professor Cameron from the Wentworth Institute of Technology. And what we're going to be covering, covering today is creating basic assemblies in SolidWorks. And this is the assembly we're going to be working with today, this block and pin assembly. Now, as we discussed earlier, assemblies are just a combination of two or more parts in SolidWorks. And the two parts we have today are this block with a little bit of a hole cut into it, and a pin that fits inside that. Now, as far as assemblies go, this is about as simple as we can make an assembly in SolidWorks. However, the fundamentals that go into putting this assembly together are exactly the same fundamentals that go into, go into putting together a larger assembly, like an engine or an aircraft. The only difference is, the more parts you add to your assembly, the more times you're going to repeat the steps that we go over today. So what we're going to end up doing today is creating three different part files, or three different files. A part file for the block, a part file for the pin, and then we're going to create a third assembly file, where we actually put these pieces together. So we're going to go ahead and start this by starting off with this block. So what we can do is we can go ahead and create a new file, a new part file, and click OK. Now, just like we always do whenever we create a new part file, is we set our units. To do that, we're going to come down to our bottom right-hand corner, and we're going to be working in inches today, so we can set our units to IPS. Now, to start this off, we're going to create a sketch on our front plane. We can come over here to our feature tree, select our front plane, and create a new sketch on it. Now, there are many different ways we could start this. But what we're going to do is we're going to use our line tool. We're going to put it right at the origin, and we're going to draw out the four sides of this box. Now, unlike using the square tool, the line tool, it might not necessarily come out as a perfectly square shape. You can see here I have two lines that are crooked. If we want to straighten those lines out, all we have to do is add in what we call a relation. And a relation constrains lines without necessarily using a smart dimension. And you can see two of them here in these little green boxes. You'll see the green box, and in this case it's telling us it's vertical. What we're going to do in my case is add a relation to this top line here. We're going to select the line, and then we'll have this box here, make horizontal or make vertical. You guys will obviously use whatever you need to on whatever line you have. Make your horizontal lines horizontal, make your vertical lines vertical. But what we want to see is those boxes on each of these lines. So now no matter how we orient our shape, it's going to stay in a perfectly square geometry. Once we have this, we can go ahead and add our smart dimensions. I'm going to grab our smart dimension and dimension the length of the top line to 6 inches, and our left-hand side to 4 inches. Now, just like with that first part that we made, this is just a flat 2D square. There's no thickness to this. To extrude this out, we're going to go to our Features tab and select Extruded Boss Base. And we're going to tell this to extrude one inch thick. And we can go ahead and select OK. So six by four by one inch is thick. Now once we have this, what we're going to do is create that pocket on the front of our part. For this, we're going to select our front surface of the box, go to our sketch tab, and create a new sketch. We're going to grab our circle tool, and somewhere roughly in the middle, it doesn't have to be perfect, we'll set that in just a minute, we're going to draw out this circle. The dimensions for this, we're going to set using smart dimension. And we're going to set our diameter to 1.5. Now 
Now we've set the size of this and the size won't change, but the location will. So to set that location, we're going to grab smart dimension again, and we're going to dimension it to the left hand side of our part. We can come in here and select this left hand line and then select the center point of our circle. We're going to set this distance to three inches. What that's done is it's constrained the circle to three inches from the side. So we have to do the same thing from the bottom to have it sit centered. We're once again, again going to grab smart dimension, click on our bottom line and the center of our circle. And we're going to set that to two inches. Once we've added those three dimensions, our sketch will be fully defined and we can go ahead and cut this out. We're going to go to our features tab and use our extruded cut tool. For this, we want the cut to only go half of an inch, so we can set our distance to 0 0.5. and select OK. And that looks pretty good. Now the last thing we have to do to this is to set our material. I'm going to come over to our feature tree, right click and select Edit Material. And both of our parts today are going to be AISI 1020. That's a type of steel, so you'll find that in the steel folder. Now, when you build assemblies, a step I like to take is to slightly tint the color of the parts. This aids in the assembly process and it makes it easier to di differentiate the parts from each other. It's not necessary, but it's a nice step to add. To color your parts, you're going to come up here to your Edit Appearance icon. This is going to pop up with a color palette. and you can select any color you want to tint your parts. I typically like to stick with the lighter pastel colors. When you get too dark, you tend to lose a lot of the detail on your part. I also avoid the blues because that's the surface, that's the color your surface is changed to when you select them. But any color that you enjoy, you can go ahead and set that and you can click OK. Once we have this part made, you can go ahead and save this part. This part has to be saved before we can insert it into the assembly. And then once we've done that, we can go ahead and create our second part of this assembly, this pin. So once again, we're gonna go to File, New, New Part File, and OK. Now this part's really simple. All it is is a cylinder. But like always, we're gonna come down here and set our units, make sure we're still working in inches. Once we've done that, we can come over here to our front plane and create a sketch on it. And then we're gonna grab our circle tool and right around the origin, draw out a circle. We're then going to use Smart Dimension to set the diameter of this circle to 1.5. To extrude this into a cylinder, we're going to go to our Features tab, Extruded Boss Base, and we're going to extrude this to a length of 4 inches. And this part is pretty much complete. All we have left to do is to set our material to that same material, AISI 1020 steel. And then if you would like to, you can tint the color of this part as well. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and save this part as well. Both of these parts need to be saved before we can insert them into the assembly. So now that we have our two part files, what we can do 
is we can go ahead and create our assembly file. File, new, and now we can create the new assembly file. When we, in, when we create a new assembly, SolidWorks is going to ask us to insert our first piece into this assembly. I generally like to insert my first piece as my base piece or my foundation piece. We're going to come down here to browse and we're going to open up this block. And then we can just go ahead and place this down anywhere in our workspace. Once we have our first piece installed, I'm going to go ahead and insert my second piece. For this, we're going to come to our assembly tab, insert components, and this is going to bring us right back to the window we were just at. We can go to browse and we can open up this pin. Now, when we insert parts into our assembly, what we want to do is just place them off to the side. We don't want to try to fit them where we think they go. Unfortunately, the assembly tool isn't nearly this clever. Also, these parts don't yet know they're solid. So it's very easy to take one part and pass it right through another one. This isn't a problem when we have big chunky parts like this, but when we have small screws, little washers, tiny parts, it's very easy to get one model lost inside of another model, and it can be a pain trying to find it. So we're just going to organize everything off to the side. So what we have to do is we have to figure out how to stick these two parts together. To do that, we have a tool called the Mate Tool. It looks like a paper clip. And what it allows us to do is to stick our surfaces together. We're first going to start off by sticking this surface here at the bottom of the hole to this surface here on the back side of the pin. So we can open up our mate tool, click the surface at the bottom of the hole, and then we're going to click that surface on the back side of the pin. And then we can select OK. Now at first glance that might not look like it worked properly. After all, our pin isn't where we want it. However, what it did is it stuck those two surfaces together. And this is kind of like sticking a magnet on a refrigerator. When you stick a magnet on a refrigerator, it's not going to come off that refrigerator. All right, it's stuck on that surface. However, you can still skate it around that surface pretty easily. And that's the situation we have here. Now to get this pin to sit in this hole, we're going to do pretty much exactly the same step that we just did, except this time we're going to mate this curved surface here on the outside of our pin to this curved surface right here in the inside of our hole. We can go ahead and open up our mate tab or our mate tool and select those two surfaces. And that's going to position it right where we need it. And so we should end up with a situation where this pin is in the center of our block. This would be a good point to go ahead and save this. So you can go ahead, file, save. If it asks you to rebuild, click yes. And you can go ahead and save this assembly. Now, just like with our sketches, we want our assemblies to be fully defined. If we check our status bar right now, our model is reading underdefined. And that's because this pin is able to rotate in this mate or in this assembly. To prevent this pin from rotating, what we're going to do is we're going to expand our mates and we'll see our two mates listed here. One is a coincident mate and one is a concentric mate. The concentric mate controls the rotation. If we look at that mate, 
It looks like a bullseye with an open white center. To lock the rotation, what we're going to do is right click and choose lock rotation. That will turn to a bullseye with a closed center. Our model will be fully defined and this pin will not be able to rotate. At this point, our assembly is more or less complete. To set us up for our next assembly that we're gonna make in the future, what we're gonna do is we're gonna position this model relative to our origin. Now, our assembly has three planes just like our parts do, front, top, and right. And where they intersect is our origin. And what we're going to do is we're going to mate those three planes to our model. Now before we can do that, we have to unfix this model. As you can see, when I click and try to move this, it's telling me the selected components are fixed and cannot be moved. That means if I go ahead and try to mate this right now, it won't work for us. So what we have to do is come over here to our left hand side where we can see our two parts listed. Our first part, our base, you'll notice has a little F in parentheses next to it. That stands for fixed. What we're gonna do is right click on that and choose the option called float. That F in parentheses will disappear. We should be able to drag this assembly around. And you'll notice our model is no longer fully defined. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put our model into an isometric view. We're gonna press control seven for that. We're gonna open up our mate tab. And from this drop down menu right here, we're first gonna select our top plane. We're gonna mate our top plane to the top side of our assembly these two surfaces here, our top plane and the top surface of this box. We can go ahead and select OK. We're going to do that same step with our remaining two planes. This time, we're going to select our front plane from this drop-down menu. We're going to mate that to this large, flat, backside surface. we can select OK. And then finally, we're going to select our right plane. And we're going to mate that to this left hand side of our assembly. And click OK. So what we've done is we've moved our model to the origin of our assembly. This is going to aid in obtaining the center of mass, which we're going to use in a later video. But for now, our assembly is complete. You can go ahead and save your assembly at this time. And then to find the mass properties of this, it's exactly the same way that we do in a part. You're going to go to your Evaluate tab and select Mass Properties. If you guys have any questions on this video, please feel free to reach out for me, out to me, and have a nice day.